In today's blood-curdling review, we're going to be continuing our looks at the McFarlane Toys Clive Barker Tortured Souls Series 2 The Fallen as we have a look at figure Zane. Before we do anything else, let's get the tape measure going. Zane, the figure, is about six inches tall. The contraption, however, that's holding Zane in place is closer to about eight inches, about seven and a half inches tall from the main frame. The fully extended arm on the far left takes the figure closer to about, about a nine inch height. For those that wondered what happened to once popular actor Billy Zane, here you go. This is Billy Zane post his career in Hollywood. No, just kidding. This is actually Zane from the Tortured Soul series 2. Another one of those contraption figures where he's basically harnessed up in this frame here and giving us a much more tortured, this is much more a tortured soul than maybe some of the other figures that we've looked at so far. This could easily have fit into series 1 as uh, we did also have a more uh, framed, contraptioned character in that wave as well. And much like that figure, this particular figure, Zane, fa falls victim to the problem of most, if not all these tortured soul figures, is that they come with zero instructions. When you get him out of packaging, he doesn't look like this. He does not attach to the contraption at all. You have to try to figure out and let me just actually show you the, let me show you what the package looks like. You don't get the story like we got with Tortured Souls Series 1. What you get is the figures down below. A little read up, a silhouette, a rough silhouette as to what they're going to look like. And then the inside is just advertisements for Movie Maniac Series 5, a Alien Predator Deluxe box set, uh, eight in, 18 inch Edward Scissorhands and some collector's car, uh, club figures. That's it. That's all you get. You get no instructions whatsoever. So just shy of going online and trying to find images of this guy was about the only help I could get to try to piece together how Zane came together. There's a couple of different ways that you can display this figure. Uh, I've seen some reviews and reviews of this guy, or reviews in Tortured Souls in general, are very few and far between. A couple of them I have seen is where the pole, this section right here, uh, was completely straight. And you can make it completely straight if you want. I looked, uh, I looked online at images and the McFarlane Toys images of this guy has the frame slightly bent. But there is technically a knuckle hinge, knuckle hinge, hinge, hinge hinge so you could theoretically have it straight but according to the images that I found of Zane Zane is closer to actually the platform rather than being basically just dangling there uh, then of course you have the fun task of trying to figure out where all the hooks go the hooks have to be installed so this arm this arm and this arm not to mention this arm as well have to be installed into Zane uh, to give you the proper look now I'm just gonna move these arms out of the way this arm is connected to his, his arm. This robotic arm, let me explain that, is connected to this arm here. And then you've got this hook right here. Uh, this is basically how everything comes together once you've assembled it. And then the hook runs right through him. Now I made this mistake when we had a look at the Series 1 figure, and I can't remember off the top of my head which what figure character that was. I'll probably put it just in the comment section down below. But I actually left off a piece. The piece, it was supposed to be a hook. It was the it was the gentleman that was dangling and he had the little creature inside his stomach. It was actually supposed to be a hook that ran right through him and also was suspended on the framework. A couple of people did comment in that video that that hook was left off and I didn't find it initially until actually I was cleaning up afterwards and the hook must have fallen out. So that hook actually was supposed to be part of the figure and it was supposed to assist in helping him being held up, suspended on that frame. I didn't make the same mistake, however, when it came to Zane. So in this instance, once again, we're just gonna remove the figure off here. This hook, this hook right here, right here, goes right through his torso. You can see probably there's my finger behind the hole. 
on the other side of the hole. And it goes all the way through right just like that. And it actually almost goes right up to the point where it's intersecting then with this hook that's gouging itself into his eye and into his mouth. From there, there's no real rhyme or reason as to which hooks you want to put where. But I mean, there is some little indications here that there is a shredded part of his upper torso. So you can take that top hook here and just want to run that through. Now, you have to be careful as well that you get the right angle because these are, after all, plastic. They don't have a lot of give to them. And you can run that secondary hook right through that, that slot in his, uh, right his shoulder neck area. This other hook, again, this one doesn't really have as much the place. If there is, I don't see one. Uh, you can kind of just have it look as, I mean, assuming that these are all moving uh, hooks that probably continue to gash and slash at him, uh, maybe the this hook here just made a couple of little slashes on his torso and continue to do so for the rest of time. This hook here I've just kind of angled off or, uh, off to the side here as it would be it would be pulling. Let me just see here. There we go. It would be pulling on his arm. So therefore, I would probably want to make that chain as tight as possible, thereby looking as if it's actually pulling at the flesh. Again, a very gruesome looking sight. This one, again, relies so much on the contraption that he's attached to and a little less on the figure, in all honesty. The figure is okay, but it doesn't really have a whole lot going on for it. He's kind of got this uh, very Cenobite-looking wrapped... It's not even really an outfit as much as it is almost like a, like a gurney or like a harness, something just kind of keeping him completely, uh, you know, completely closed and imprisoned. Uh, it has all these little beltlets and looplets here. And I suppose you could try to take it off. I mean, it looks like there are just a couple of fasteners, but I mean, it, it looks obviously like it's supposed to be there, so I'm going to just keep it on. It has very minimal amounts of creativity, I would say. A lot of it, again, relies on the harness as being the main gimmick for this particular figure. You'll notice as well, too, there's a substantial amount of blood sprinkled all over the flooring in which the character is dangling over top of, as well as blood completely splattered all across the framework here as well. And getting it out of packaging, I did also make sure that I had it facing the right way. So theoretically, you could have harnessed it the other way too, but that would have been the wrong way. So let's try our best to kind of get a look at his face, which is again, a very gruesome looking sight. We'll just kind of move this hook out of the way here serves no purpose, at least from the standpoint of looking at the figure's face. Yeah, the figure's face is just gruesomely shredded. Looks like it's been stitched together a couple of times. I guess the intent with this tortured soul is he continues to be tortured and then just kind of kept alive. All these little gashes here are really neat, especially in the hand where you see the, the tendons underneath there. There is some articulation. Originally, the hands were down when I got them out of packaging, but online, the hands are up, so I just I mimicked that as well. Like the gashing right in the top here between the neck and the shoulder area. Uh, the face is uninspiring. I'll say that. It doesn't really have the most creativity when it comes to, all of, of all the tortured souls, this guy just doesn't have a whole lot going on for him in the face. He's got some really cool, like, scarring and just mangledness to his body. But in all honesty, his face is really uninspiring. Sure, it's got some cool details to it. The texturing is neat, but something should have been, I think, a little bit done differently to his face. Something just a little bit more creative. He's got this one hook, again, that's pulling down on his lip and pulling down on his, on his one eye. The other eye is long gone. Looks like it's almost making use of another person's skin and it's been kind of stitched on there. Or it's decayed so much to the point where it's it's gone an off gray color uh, around the stitching. So whatever doctor this guy went to, he should have really got a second opinion. Again, some really cool gashes and stuff like that in there, in the arm, in the hands. And down below you have his feet. One foot is exposed. Looks like it's been completely skinned. And you got the exposed foot. The other foot is 
covered in a uh, in a boot, and then you've got all these like little uh, these belts, these little separate belt pieces that just sit loose. There's really no place for them. I looked again online. Uh, you can kind of have them further up if you want to kind of keep imagining keeping the legs nice and, and and restrained, you know, tight and restrained here. But again, there's really not much, not much in the way of instructions for this guy. Shame on McFarland Toys. I mean, give him this, he'll he'll make creative looking pieces, but sometimes including instructions on how to actually put these guys together is something completely different. He, he's very bad at doing that. Articulation on this guy, by the way. We'll just move the hook once again out of the way. His head is on a swivel, though I don't get why there's even a hinge there, because clearly his head is supposed to be facing one way. Uh, any bit of movement, any bit of movement to that head, I, I would fear that something here would get disrupted. So I'm just to leave that all together. There's a swivel on the bicep portion as well as a swivel on the hand. This one's a little bit more restricted because he's got the chain going here. The other hand, on the other hand, he's got the forearm swivel here, and he's also got, I think he's got a hand swivel here as well, or maybe it's just the forearm. Nothing really in the waist. Uh, any little bit of movement, it feels like these things, these little straplets wanna come loose, these little harnessed pieces wanna come loose. Again, he's very limited on articulation. Not that, the rest of the tortured souls had a whole lot of articulation, but clearly this particular guy is more show, I think, than something that's posable. Yes, Billy Zane's career just wasn't the same after Titanic here. Clearly you see the end result here, and joking aside, this is not a bad figure. Unfortunately, this particular figure, if not for the internet, which is this miraculous thing that has just only existed, well, it's existed lot longer than this YouTube channel. If not for the internet, I would not even know how to really piece this guy together as there was no instructions once again included with any of these tortured souls. Some are pretty straightforward and you kind of figure th things out for yourself. Figures like this, for example, really could have used instructions and McFarlane Toys once again just thinks, yeah, you're smart. You're smart collectors. You'll figure it out for yourself. I did figure it out not really for myself. I figured it out really with the means of, uh, again, looking online to try to figure out where all the pieces come together. Speaking of pieces, by the way, I forgot to also mention that there's articulation in the ankles. So if you want to have the ankles an dangled, if you want the feet dangled a little further down, you can also do that as well. Zane's not a bad looking figure, but again, really for him, he relies so much on what he's accompanying or what is accompanying him with that the figure on his own, if he was just strictly on his own, a standing figure, he would be really a, quite a, uh, a poor, unoriginal, very boring looking figure. However, you get him in this harnessed contraption. He's still boring, but at least the harness gives him a little extra oomph that I feel really wasn't there, if not the harness being in the, in the equation. Zane's a decent enough looking figure, but I find the face and just the overall execution of the figure itself, the figure on his own, not counting the harness, is actually really boring. Today, though, we were having a look and continuing our looks at the McFarlane Toys Clive Barker. This was the Tortured Soul Series 2, The Fallen. And today we're having a look at actor Billy Zane. I feel bad actually saying that. I don't think Billy Zane watches my videos. If he does, Billy, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. This clearly does not look like you, Billy Zane. You're very talented actor. I, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm sure it's it's something good. We can only hope. Stay tuned, guys, if you haven't had a chance also to subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. You won't miss me when it comes to future videos. And of course, speaking of future videos, make sure you're tuned in here for future videos as we have a look at the rest of the figure line from the Tortured Souls Series 2. There's still, I guess, three figures left to go. Of course, we'll have a look at those in their own independent corresponding separate videos i threw a whole bunch of words in there that really wasn't necessary i'm still thinking about billy zane as always guys thanks for watching as you always do i'll see you next time <laughs>